Hola community, welcome to the first video from the Blender Studio in 2021. This one is for fields. What is fields? Why, why are fields? <laughs> Geometry nodes fields. Yes. Uh, this is something entirely new that's come to Blender 3.0 that took the first ideas we had for geometry nodes and changed it upside down and made it more complex, a bit more flexible, a bit more complicated in, to, in some ways, but hopefully overall it works better and it's easier for people to learn how to use. And that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. So we, you wrote a blog post uh, some last month actually Last month, Jack was here, Jack Luke, and he was working with Hans Goody on a prototype for this concept of fields. Before we had what we're calling a pure data flow centric approach, which you have the geometry and every node will just operate into the geometry. And then with the fields, the idea is that some nodes can operate into the, into the geometry, let's call them geometry nodes, while other nodes are just passing along functions to be then processed and evaluated in those other nodes. And this changes a lot. This changes how we read old files. So we expect people to have to adapt to the new system. Yes. And, and that's what we are going to do today. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so let's see. I downloaded the latest Blender, right? If I just download it from the billboard, then I have it already. And I'm going to download a file from Simon Thomas that it's also available for um, for download in the Geometry Nodes page. It's one of the test files for the first iteration, right? For the scattering. And this was the first test file we officially published. So that's why it's a nice example. It's simple to the point. Yes. So first thing, OK, I, I know nothing about this. I see that it's actually working in a way. There is some scattering happening. But in the node editor, I see a bunch of warnings. Not only the node editor, if you go to the modifier, we should see there as well. No tree legacy. No tree legacy node. Okay. Uh, if you mouse over the warning, it should also tell you when you should start getting concerned about it. So basically, <laughs> the legacy nodes will be removed at some point before Blender 4 in two years from now. OK, so before two years, this will be gone. What, who, how do I know which ones are legacy? Is, uh, is there a list or I can or, or it's just going to show the warning? Basically, every one of the old ones, so the legacy ones, they're going to show the warning. And if you try to add a new node, it's simply going to add, only gives you the option to add the new nodes, the non-legacy ones. OK, so I can see the attribute list is pretty much empty uh, compared to what it used to be. That's the uh, good question, Pablo. <laughs> That's the big change we have uh, when it comes to pipeline, to workflow with the old system you'd have every node referring to an attribute in the node itself. So in this example, you can yeah. see the scale is an attribute there. The pebbles large in the point distributor is an attribute. And with the field system, and, and, and back then we needed in specific attribute nodes to operate on those. So in this case, you're using the attribute random node to, the, to populate a attribute with some random values. So in this case, I'm taking the vertex group uh, pebbles large or L, and then uh, I'm randomizing the scale and the rotation. How can I do this in the new system? How can I convert this? It's not automatic, right? It's not automatic yet. OK. When you say that we might remove those before 4.0, is that if at some point someone from the community uh, can act, help us with a uh, backward compatibility, some do versioning code, we can even remove them automatically. Right now, I have to do it manually, though. OK, so teach me how to do it. <laughs> first well, step. First step. So the, the first thing you need to, to, to be able to do is to have the um, attribute you want to use as a mask. So in this case, the pebble large exposed outside the modifier. OK. So the easiest way to do it, I would say start adding the point, the new distribute points interface. So the new point distribute node. OK, so this is a point distribute. I just need to replace it with a new one. So I can yeah. just search for distribute, and it's called distribute points on faces. Yeah. It even changed the name. Yeah, we took this as an opportunity to make the name a bit more accurate. And as you can see, the parameters change a little bit as well. Uh, this year, looking to the random option. If you go back to the pause on disk mode, uh, even that you can see you know, uh, now we have the selection as a new option. 
and most of the nodes almost all of the selection of all of the geometry nodes will be able to su support selection into the future because wow. any operation that you're doing that to the geometry can easily be done in a subset of the geometry wow so it's something so uh, can limit it and this is like a what why does it look different why what is why, what is with all these shapes so many questions. Uh, let's start <laughs> with the shape one, simple. We have three shapes that you see there. You see they have the circle one, which represents data. A data is something that can be inspected. So for instance, if you connect the, the input geometry into yeah. that node, and then you mouse over the points, we get exactly, oh, you need to connect this to oh, the- Makes sense. To the, the to the end, let's say to the end. Yeah. I'm just connect instead. If you inspect the points, it's gonna tell you exactly what is there. The data is, the data that's been passed along the noodle. Same things for normals and rotation. Oh, you're not using it, so it's not being computed yet. For performance, I guess. For performance. Yeah. Uh, it's of course it's also the same data. Um, you can inspect in the spreadsheet editor. If you connect this geometry to the to a viewer to the viewer node. So I don't have to do it. I want to see it. Okay. I see there is 4, 432. That is correct. Okay. Now what? Now the other the other shape you have um, is a triangle. Those are fields. Maybe it's easier to explain in... By connecting it to something? <laughs> by connecting it to something. Okay. So what can I do? First, I have the distribute points. And then I need to instance this, I guess. I need to instance the... I could, for instance, for instance, for instance. Uh, the easiest way to see fields, maybe, re, 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 maybe later in this example, I think we're gonna have a, a few fields which really work with the new system. Yeah. But fields, basically, if you connect the normal to a or the rotation to a node that to the math node. To a math vector math. Uh, vector math. Okay, so I can connect this. There. Yep. And then you connect this vector to the... Okay. Um, usually I'll put... Maybe it'd be easier if you just put yes. the point, the instance on points already. Yeah, I can see that. Okay, and then I connect to the rotation and I pass on the points. Yeah. Do we get to see the viewport there? Yes, we're looking at it. Yes, send the viewport. Now we're not instancing anything yet. That's the other new thing about this node. So before we have the point instance node that you could pick whether you want to instance an object, a collection, or these are the two. Or geometry. These are is comparing the, the old one. So you could only choose collection geometry or object. Yeah. Geometry is not even new for people that were on two point nine three. Oh yeah, that is in three point <laughs> which is fantastic. So we can basically instance any geometry. Uh, so for instance, create a cube node. A cube so node. geometry primitives cube. And then connect the geometry to the, to the instance. Oh, just like that. Yep. And you should be able to see then. Maybe Dancing. scale them down a little bit. I was going even to even to scale the instance, but that's good. Ah, to scale the instance. No, yeah. no, I, I'm a pro already. Yes. <laughs> but now the rotation, for instance, you can try to... Um, to change you it. You can just add. It's gonna, something's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's adding to the X, right? To the X rotation or Z yeah. rotation. And in this case, you can just think, okay, just the normals are being passed through. But first, if you try to mouse over the diamond socket, it, it doesn't really evaluate yet. So it still doesn't know what's its value. It's only going to know the value when it gets all the way to the node that's using it. To the rotation. But basically, it says it's depending on something else. It's depending on the normal uh, so field. So interesting. Yeah. This name might change. This this two tips gonna get yeah redone a little I'm bit. I'm actually angering the normal instead of the rotation. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Um, what else I can explain? I even there's something interesting already. If you now if you go and change, um, let's say because that's something you're gonna use in this example. Let's say you want to have the scale a bit randomized. Yeah. Before. You had to use the attribute randomizer. Yeah. Now I can just go to the with this thing, for to, example. Yeah. Can just do shift A, and go to random. It's an input random, I believe. No, random is I forgot what it is. So just type it random value. Random value. Now if you just connect uh, this to the scale. 
to the scale, I guess I need to be a vector, right? For... Mm, you don't have to. Ooh. If it has a float, it's simply going to be using the same value for all of them. So if you want a uniform scale, that's what you do. Oh, nice. As you can see, you can play the range. However, right now, if you change the amount of pebbles you are distributing, so if you change the density maximum or distance minimum, you see there's a lot of popping in and out. Yeah. That's because we are not using the so the stable ID yield we have there. That's a bit of a new concept. Stable ID, this guy. Ah. Yeah. So if you just connect the stable ID to the random value. To the random value, any uh, value. To the random value node in the ID input. Yeah. Because by default, and that's the something about fields that work the same way for uh, shader nodes. Ah. Basically, if there's nothing connected, it has always a fallback. Yeah. And in this case, the same we have a UV as a fallback to a lot of the vector input in shaders. In this case, basically, the fallback is the ID itself, the, the thing we see in the spreadsheet editor. But in this case, we want something else which is called a stable ID. Yeah, uh, so each uh, point has its own ID that I can use for anything, for coloring, for anything. It's, a, it's an attribute, right? Uh, oh, I can even mouse over and get the value. So it's stable ID, anonymous attribute. Anonymous means that it, you, I didn't name it manually, right? It means you didn't name it's it. automatic yes. behind the scenes. It also means it doesn't show up in the spreadsheet editor because it does not a name per se. OK. So did you, see, did you see how stable it is now? Yeah, well, actually, I was just changing this value, yeah. and it, it doesn't, yeah. Uh, yeah, doesn't jump anymore. If I mute this thing. Oops. Control, Con control okay. out. And it's yeah. something that even Simo was proposing, if you could find a way to have the stable ideas the default for those. Yeah. But has still been discussed. Yeah, so super nice. Cool. So we saw, well, and the, but the, the interesting thing about fields is that, let's say you have another instance on points node connected to the same points. Let me move the entire thing here. <laughs> so let's say we have what? Sorry, another instance on point. Yeah. And then you connect. You know, maybe create a different uh, set of points to be used. Different set of points. Yeah, just duplicate this node and just change its parameters to something else. It doesn't matter. Change yeah. the seed as well, just so it's more random. More random. <laughs> more random. <laughs> more random. Yeah. Um, and I can just join this. Oh, uh, yes. Do you have the Wrangler enabled? No. I was string join. Spoiler alert, that's something new that also is <laughs> coming. Um, I didn't have the, the Wrangler add-on enabled. So, yeah. okay, I have the points. I need to instance. Can I instance the same cube or do you want? Okay. Uh, instance uh, something else just so we can tell them apart. So okay. the, the, the sphere. The icosphere. Well, I have a bunch of objects I could have. <laughs> cool, there you go. And then I can make this smaller. Yeah. But now you can also, if you connect the random value there, the Beautiful. random value, this one. Yeah. So you can even unconnect from the ID. Let's ignore the stable ID for now. Okay. Just it so if you connect the random value there in the scale. Well, okay, that's a, a big scale. Oh, because you need to change the radius here. Ah, sorry. Yeah. So this way, that's the that's when you start seeing fields as something different than the data flow. Because the same field is connected to both nodes. And even though they have a different number of elements of, of basically of points you're instancing. They can still work and it knows, okay, for this geometry, I have 100 points, so I'm going to create 100 random values. Oh, for this other, I have 10 points, I'm going to create only 10 random values. It just knows somehow. Yeah. And that's also why you see then as uh, represented differently um, in, in the node editor. Basically, if you see the dashed lines, those are data, those are basically callbacks. Once you get to this node, it goes all the way to the beginning, and then I'm gonna. Yeah, I was wondering. So this this means um, fields, the same as the as, as this shape. Yes. Yeah. Cool. The other interesting thing you can do if you add a math node between the random value and the, and the one of the instance points, you can just multiply the the, the math, yeah. or you just add or multiply. Yeah, a anything basically. Yeah. And this is going to be something that's going to be quite useful. I can show quickly because if we forget an attribute that someone painted, you can just go and treat 
and multiply this, operate on that, and it connect to the density, to the distribution factor. To any so of those parameters. this could be like a weight map. Yes. And wow. you can use this in different ways. So it's, it's like shading almost, right? It's, it's very similar to shading. The difference is that shading usually has the same context inside the, the whole node tree. Well, here might have different geometries and one of the geometry might have a field, the other one might not have it. Um, I think it'd be interesting to maybe try to start to do, to start playing around and start to... <laughs> to convert this thing. Yeah, just to do the basic distribution. It's Maybe maybe can just remove the the second the second one the second one and the cube, the cube. and instead of the cube let's use remove the add over there as well G of seven sorry remove the add one here uh, yes and uh, it's G of seven so yeah, I G can I can do this is that still uh, legal so fancy yes. yeah yes can drag and drop connect to instance there so you go I have some pebbles yeah. if you want a similar result to what you have you can just copy the values so this is Minimum was 0 0.02, I think. The minimum distance yeah. zero 0.02. Yeah, let, let's, let's do it perfect. The minimum, minimum, yeah. The maximum, though, is the thing that's using, in this case, it was multiplying the, the, water, value, from the value from the modifier. I can just bring that. Right? You can just bring. Ooh. Ooh. And now I need to apply the mask. Yes. Uh, I'll apply it as a factor. The factor. So if you just connect the factor, as you can see, that's the third shape we haven't talked yet. So we talked <laughs> about the circle, we talked about the diamond. Yeah. This is a shape that might change. Here, uh, there's a design to do something that's maybe more intelligible. What does it mean? But that means it's, it's an input that can receive either a field or a single attribute, a uh, single value. So a this or a this. Yeah. This is the merge. Okay. So as a comparison, the distance minimum is one minimum distance to the entire uh, point distribution uh, node. Yeah. Same goes for the seed, but the density factor can be different for different di for the different parts of the geometry. Ah. So if you just connect this to the outside, to, to the group input, I can expose it. You mean? Mm -hmm. Here. Yeah. Give it a nice name. Give it a nice name. Such as large pebble map. Or map. Map, mask, map, mask. Map, um, by default, when you expose those uh, at those fields outside, it get mapped as a single value. Yeah. But you can also, if you click on the icon for the spreadsheet, you just can use instead a vertex group. Oh. An cool. attribute. So I can. This was the large. Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice. So this is a toggle between using a single value or whatever attribute, mask, vertex color, anything. Yes. And something you can do that is was not possible before. You can just try to just add a multiply, similar to what we just did, right? Add a multiply, but in the density factor. Okay, so, so a, I can I can duplicate uh, duplicate this here. And you can just play with the scale a little bit if you want to tweak. Oops, yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> not not be be. be. Ah. Oh, so I'm multiplying the vertex uh, group. Uh, it's super powerful. If you want to do one on one with the old five, you need to remove that. But can do color ramp. <laughs> you can do color ramp. Do we have color ramp already? Don't remember. Yes. Uh. Yeah. I think we have ramp. Color yeah. ramp. Yeah. That's pretty neat. Oh wow! Uh, that's, that's super cool. Super neat. Yes. Nice. <laughs> nice. So and I'm this saying. is a function you can see here. That's so cool. And of course, you could use this for. Uh, again, for a different part of a different node that had a different resolution. Uh, something that you don't even need to think about is what is the domain. So we basically took a mask, which was a vertex group. So it was stored in every vertex corner. Yeah. And we're corner. And we're passing to a node that is expecting the data in. You don't see here, but maybe could even make that more visible. But just expecting the data in face. That's why the name of the node is distributed point in face. Yeah. So it's automatically uh, extrapolating or interpolating from face cor from face corners to the face themselves. But the same attribute could apply to another node that require edges and would just work automatically. That's one of the strengths of uh, the field system. So maybe remove the sh the well. Can leave there the color ramp. Whatever. Uh, your instance uh, may want to randomize a little bit of rotation. How about that? Yes. Now let's try to do it yourself. Myself. Yeah. 
Randomize the rotation. Well, I can use a random value, right? Mm -hmm. Random value. By the way, we're on YouTube and you're making me do things by myself. Okay, so I want to randomize um, the rotation. And um, well, actually, it can just be a float, right? It will convert. It should convert. So there you go. Um, for rotation, what we were doing before at least was going from minus p to plus p yeah using 10 decimals of no. 10 decimals okay <laughs> I'll go back to remember maybe that. not <laughs> now it's it, it, you don't even need to well try it I want you don't even need to connect the original rotations and in input not even ah, I just ah, yeah, just ignore it just knows and it's gonna be random so. it just knows that it's a rotation attribute yes and it's just, and, and, and you're not you're not multiplying the rotation you're just replacing it yeah. So it's also. So I would say from minus pi to pi. Minus pi to oh. pi. Wow. And remember the the thing about being making it stable. So once again, if you change the, well, you even try if you change the large pebbles in the modifier, the this yes. Oh, it jumps. It jumps yeah. a lot. So I want to pass this guy over here. Uh, to the random value, at least. To here. The random yeah, I think maybe that's all. Yep. Oh, there you go. That's fine. We actually reconnected the large pebbles. We didn't even look at the. I oh, know we did look at the result. Yeah. We saw the color ramp. That's so and cool. uh, the original five, we're doing is something similar for scale. Which for is, the scale. Yeah, which basically is the. Um, so I can just basically do uh -huh. this, get the same for scale, and this I can use a float. And this can use a float, yes. And we're doing from point. I oh, can check down there. Don't remember. So uh, scale is point two five to fifty to six hundred. Six hundred. There you go. Mm -hmm. And scale. There you go. There you go. Super neat. And that's wow. pretty much the. Um, how I got the, the the first pebble. The other ones are just a bit different. Be interesting. You can try to do. Ah, but this is the same. It's a copy paste. This is the same. The method is different. So if you maybe open the file which we already set and then up. Okay, but yeah, at a glance, it's the point distribute attribute randomize all three of them. The difference is that one's using a pulse on disk, the other one using the random. Ah, okay. And for the random one, it's pretty nice because you can just multiply the input mask with the factor. Yeah. And you don't need two parameters as we had before, because before we had the density. Max and the density attribute as two separate parameters. Yeah. But now, if you go to the new, if you just duplicate this node and make a. This whole thing, I guess. That can be do something else. Well, this one I don't need. Um, what for? And then, just, just to show the random, the options now that when you change to the random points on face. I need to get this guy here. I need to get this guy to join it. Mm hmm. And if I need to use a gel pebble, it's fine. It's gonna be a different pebble, but that's okay. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I think it's all the same pebble. Right? No, no, it's the pebble, pebble, it's ah, of, of four. Okay, can do pebble of four. Yes. And the random the the is size wrong. is much bigger, I think. This is the old no, but this, this, this is fine. I'd like to, if you look, if you change the the method of distribution from poison, poison disk to, to random, random, now you can only have the density. We yeah. no longer have the density mask, maximum, and the attribute mask. Yeah. So how do we do? First, you want to be able to get the the mask from outside. Yeah. So I'm gonna so start get there. this guy density outside, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna name it as what is this? That's the median pebble mask. All right, and you change and it to attribute. attribute. And this guy wants, there you go. Okay. Is it working already? Probably is. We can Probably just is. hide the big one. No one cares about them. I can just basically, uh, yeah. Mute the connection. Mute this, yeah. Hmm? That is here. Yeah. Like if I just see this, yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's totally there. Uh, the thing is, you know, Super uh, tiny, oh, yeah. for, oh, oh, for the video, it's going to be terrible. Okay. There. That helps. Um, 
the thing is the densities was way larger before because yeah. before we are taking the number outside yeah and then multiplying so basically <clears throat> if you're not what you want to do is to multiply the mask you just brought in with the um, the factor that was exposed times 100 <laughs> which is so on this mask mm -hmm. for a hundred yeah before one thing i recommend is to connect everything before connecting there otherwise the computer might hang it happened to me it's terrible oh but that has to do with uh with me not being wise enough to do it one step at a time <laughs> yes and this you want to multiply the mask by the value that's outside but the bevels here mm -hmm. oh so now technically if you change the value there you see already but it's very tiny the other thing we do is multiply that number by 100 this guy by 100 that's where we're going to be careful because <laughs> Okay, and this will just know. Okay, let's do 23. But well, there we go. Yeah, it's fine. I just connected the thing 100 by 100 by that was too much. There we go. And That's of course, if you neat. change the scale to the what you had, then you have the. Yeah, the scale. There you go. Oh, then you have both pebbles. And I quick, need to connect it both here, and then I need to. There. We already have a file that has all the three pebbles converted, which is online. Um, unavailable here i just downloaded it <laughs> without you knowing there you go so this is oh, the same. Nice. okay this looks more clean i, I made a, i made a little bit of a mess you use the object info instance or is oh you're hiding stuff i'm using me. control h aggressively in this file control h or double node options uh, hidden sockets hidden sockets the sockets that are not used can i also hidden. multiplied i also duplicated the group input a few times oh Ah, but just for readability, you just have for to readability. Do this. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, you mentioned that not all the nodes are converted, and I am pro I'm making like you are telling me. So, where can I find it? Well, actually, there is a link that is in the description on uh, the list of nodes that need to be imported over. Right? Yes, this is this covers most of the nodes. Yeah, the exceptions are, for instance, the um, texture. Before I had a texture attribute. Now, we'll, this was one of the few parts of Blender that was still using the old texture base, uh, node based texture. Yeah. And it is to make, try to replace this to um, something uh, similar to what they have in Eevee and Cycles, which is a dedicated, uh, we have what, dedicated cloud texture node, dedicated image texture node. For each texture, so it will look be like shading basically at some point. Yeah, just yes. It's just merge. I would nice. expect at least for 3.0 for us to have the image texture node. Wow, which is like sample, like it would be the old attribute sample texture. Yeah, so it'll be a way to replace that for the non built in textures. Okay, these are the removed nodes, quite a lot, so much work, and uh, these are not necessarily any change. Is there an estimated time when this is going to be available? There is, but you know, videos are timeless, so keep checking master. Keep checking master, um, download it, um, and but of course, 3.0 is going to have 3.0 should have it all. If you're using yes. 3.0, you're somewhere from the time in the future, <laughs> don't even bother. Okay, so people, download here the builder.blender.org, get the latest 3.0 alpha geometry nodes. Uh, this is this file is updated. Uh, by the time of uh, this video, oh, it's already updated. Uh, is there? Yes. Yeah, but not, not all of them. I'm, I'm not all of them. And... Yeah. Okay. This one. So if you want to use it as a reference, but it should be pretty straightforward. And also on YouTube, people are making videos everywhere. Yeah, and if you see, if you're doing so nice art of these, use the jump to notes hashtag, bt3 hashtag. Yes. Because for 3.0, you want to expand. You might not convert those simple files ourselves. Yeah. Maybe the original contributors can do that. But also looking for new sample files. There's so many nice ones already. People using fields for some mixed Doctor Strange effects and to I know it's already I'm already enamorated with the results. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, thanks for the explanation. Thanks for tuning in. I think we are going to play with this a lot. It's a whole new whole new world for geometry now and for Blender itself. So and I'm very happy in like in, in behalf of the team and everyone that's contributing to that. It's just so nice to see people using it and giving feedback uh, and just doing real production art, the commercials, 
PV ads already have jumped to nodes and now trying with fields. Yes. If this is already in master, so if something if something doesn't work, please report it. That's all. Thank you. And Thank you, Pablo. Bye.